ट्रांसलेशन The working senses are superior to dull matter. Mind is higher than the senses. Intelligence is higher, is still higher than the mind, and he, the soul, is even higher than the intelligence. So, uh, this is the hierarchy uh, of the first is sense objects, but senses are higher than the sense objects. higher than senses is mind hmm. so this uh, five five senses are compared compared to like five fingers of our body and mind is this portion what you call it english okay. palm hmm. yeah so this palm of so you see that all these five fingers are connected through palm palm is like the center of the five fingers similarly the five senses the mind is the central point and mind is superior to senses then above mind is intelligence above intelligence is spirit soul hmm. so now this hierarchy uh, just like in the government we have hierarchy right or any institute we have hierarchy so a hierarchy means the person who is in superior hierarchy he has more power than the person who is subordinate hmm. so that means each of these uh, particular aspects have more power than their less lower aspect mm -hmm. so now uh, so ideally intelligence has more power than mind and so our soul has more power than intelligence also mm -hmm. so this way the uh, power also indicates that there is a ability to control isn't it so the that hierarchy those who are in higher hierarchy they have ability to control that thing which is in lower hierarchy so in the purport so particularly this verse uh he is saying the hierarchy and this is the important verse also to be memorized so purport purpose says that the senses are different outlets for the activities of lust so it's continuing from previous verses you know the section is going out about lust so senses are the outlet of lust because senses are the one who like you know the lust exhibits itself through senses because ultimately sense lust comes in the form of particularly a particular sense gratifying a particular sense object hmm. so sense object is called as matra tan matra you know uh, sparsha rupa rasa gandha shabda hmm? these are all tan matras so they are sense objects senses are ten senses right hmm? ears nose eyes uh tongue and the sense of touch you know skin then there are five working senses hands legs voice vocal cord then genitals and anus these are the total 10 senses now these 10 senses are basically outlet of lust you know so so in this way the lust is preserved within the entire body proper says but it is given vent through the senses therefore 
senses are superior to the body as a whole. Hmm. Prabhupada says further that bodily action means the functions of senses. Hmm. So, means if the senses are not functioning, you know, the body is almost like a useless only. <laughs> if the senses are not functioning. Again, if you think that if all five senses are not functioning, everything else may be there in the body, but it is almost like a useless body. So, if one stops the senses, then that means basically stopping all bodily actions. But since, even if one stops bodily actions, even if senses may be stopped, they may be restrained, but there is a fellow called mind, he is not quiet. So, even though the body may be inactive, but the mind is very active in any stage that we must have experienced. And one typical example Prabhupada gives is of sleeping. While sleeping, all the senses are inactive, body is also inactive while dreaming, but mind is so active, especially in the, during the dreaming stage. Hmm. So, now, above the mind is intelligence and the function of intelligence is twofold. Decision and determination. Hmm. So, intelligence, if he has determination, then he can control the mind. Above intelligence is soul. Because source is, soul is the source of energy. You know, if soul is not there, there is no uh, consequence of any intelligence or mind or senses. Nothing, nothing functions. So, soul is the source of all power. Hmm. Now, Prabhupada says that if the soul is directly engaged in the service, service of the Supreme Lord, then what will happen? Automatically, all the subordinates, intelligence, mind and senses will be also engaged. So, one of the things is also required is to engage our mind because mind, what happened in conditioned state? So, you all have heard this chariot analogy, right? Body is compared to chariot and five senses are compared to five horses and the ropes are compared to the mind and the driver is intelligence. Now what happens that although intelligence is more powerful than mind but uh, the intelligence which is weak is often overtaken by mind and mind becomes superior to intelligence. It becomes more powerful than intelligence. You know. Um, just like sometimes in a hierarchy uh, there may be a superior person but he has seen sometimes that superior person is almost hel helpless although he has power but it is as good as he has no power because the subordinates have become very stubborn so these senses and mind they have become such stubborn and so powerful together that even though intelligence is superior to them but sometimes in the conditioned state, intelligence becomes helpless, you know, because the intelligence is also attacked by this lust. And now intelligence is powerless. And mind is the powerful agent of Maya. Hmm. So, often then, mind takes over intelligence. Although intelligence has power of determination and discrimination, but mind takes over intelligence. And in this way, uh, intelligence becomes helpless. Hmm. So, uh, uh, that's how the mind also is an important factor. In fact, it is one of the most important factor. And that's how uh, mind is directly engaged in the service of the Lord. Hmm. So when Prabhupada is saying that the soul should be engaged in the service of the Lord, it essentially means mind being engaged. Because uh, in the conditioned state, the mind plays the most important role. Hmm. So that's why engage the mind in the service of the Lord. Because mind is the dictator for both senses also and to some degree intelligence also. <laughs> so better engage mind in the service of the Lord. Hmm. So then the senses will not act loose way. Hmm. So Param Drishtva Nivartate, Prabhupada quotes, if the mind is engaged in the transcendental service of the Lord, there is no chance of its being engaged in the lower propensities. Also parallelly, uh, it is although it is true that first engage the senses, you know, at the same time, because the mind and intelligence are superior, so they also should be engaged. So mind is engaged in various ways. 
in thinking of Krishna and other things. And intelligence, which Prabhupada says, with intelligence, one has to seek out the constitutional position of the soul. And intelligence, that's why should be strengthened, as we saw yesterday also. Intelligence is the security guard, but the security guard is captured by captured by lust. Hmm? Isn't it? So now the security guard cannot be trusted. He has been bribed by the lust. And he is under the control of our enemy. So it cannot be trusted. So that's why the intelligence should be hired from Guru Sadhu Shastra. You remember this point yesterday we discussed? From Guru Sadhu Shastra the intelligence should be hired, borrowed. So now this, uh, when we borrow intelligence from Guru Sadhu Shastra, then the intelligence becomes very powerful and that intelligence can control the mind. And in this way, he can engage the mind always in Krishna consciousness. And Prabhupada says that solves the whole problem. Yes. Hmm. So while engaging the senses in the service of the Lord, we should also try to engage mind and intelligence. Hmm. So Prabhupada says, a neophyte spiritualist is generally advised to keep aloof from the objects of the senses. Hmm. So neophyte uh, person should not uh, contact generally the senses with sense objects very freely. Why? Because there is a great chance that the senses may become very much attached to sense objects and the mind may drag the conditioned soul. So, uh, we may uh, engage everything in Krishna's service, but at the same time, if we don't have that ability, then one has to remain aloof from the sense gratification. One example is given, for example, Haridas Thakur, Srila Haridas Thakur, he could engage even the prostitute in Krishna's service. But if we don't have that level of advancement, then we should not imitate Haridas Thakur and one should remain aloof. Hmm. So certainly engaging the senses in the service of the Lord can be done only to the degree we have that capacity. Hmm. But beyond that, if we don't have that adhikar, then everything cannot be engaged. For example, some prostitute comes in front of us. We cannot say, you just sit and I'll chant. Right? If we tell like that, you know, who will preach to whom? We don't know <laughs> what will happen. <laughs> so, so we can't do so. We can't imitate Haridas Thakur. So we have to remain aloof. So that's why at a neophyte stage, Haridas Thakur was not in a neophyte stage. He is on a Siddha platform. So he he was, he could do that. But for us, uh, we had to keep ourselves aloof from the sense objects, being neophyte. Hmm. At the same time, simply keeping ourselves aloof from sense objects will not work. Side by side, one has to strengthen the mind by use of intelligence. Hmm. So, uh, so Prabhupada says here, if by intelligence one engages one's mind in Krishna consciousness by complete surrender into the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then automatically the mind becomes stronger. And even though the senses are very strong, like serpents, they will no more be effective than the serpents with broken fangs. Hmm. But even though the soul is the master of intelligence and mind, the senses also, till unless it is strengthened by association with Krishna, in Krishna consciousness, there is every chance of falling down due to agitated mind. Hmm. So, we have to simultaneously engage the senses in the service of the Lord, restrain the senses from sense objects, try to engage mind in the service of the Lord, and also strengthen the intelligence. So, intelligence can be strengthened through Guru Sadhu Shastra. So, that's why Shastric study is considered to be a very, very important subject. Very, very important thing, especially for a Brahmachari. You know, why? So, uh, because Brahmachari stage is the formative years of one's life. And that time, we have to strengthen our intelligence through Shastra study, Shastra vichar. So that helps to control the mind and with such a controlled mind, the person can uh, uh, such a solid intelligence and controlled mind, person can go very happily in his spiritual life throughout life. That's why in the Vedic times, Brahmacharis 
jo even it will come ahead when you will go to 17th or 18th chapter 16th 17th chapter different yajnas so yajna for a brahmachari is shravanam this years are yajna kunda and you should keep hearing so if you remember yesterday's verse also propa said try to control from beginning beginning means propa said from childhood from the beginning of one's life so that beginning of one's life is basically brahmachari life hmm? and in that brahmachari life one should try to uh, con you know control the senses you know so these are all practices one should do in brahmachari life control the senses hmm? then uh, strengthen the intelligence control the mind and in this way engage in lord service abide by the orders of guru and in this way restrain from unrestricted sense gratification so if these things are done in brahmachari stage then such a person becomes a grahastha he will become a very good grahastha why because he will have uh, proper control over himself he will not become slave of the senses and such a person can easily go to vanaprastha and sanya stage also so that's how foundational stage these things are very important so one is shastra patan another is uh, mind and senses to be engaged in the service of the lord and also restrained from the objects of the senses especially those those things which are harmful so following those do's and don'ts so yeah so soul is the highest and can control all mind intelligence and senses yeah so 43rd verse please recite uh, deepak prabhu evam budde param budva evam budde param budva samsta vyatmanam atmana samsta vyatmanam atmana jahi satru mahabaho jahi satru mahabaho kama rupam durasadam kama durasadam translation thus knowing oneself to be transcendental to the material senses mind and intelligence o mighty armed arjuna one should study the mind by deliberate spiritual intelligence krishna consciousness and thus by spiritual strength conquer this insatiable enemy known as lust yeah so that's so uh, one of the expertise of good speaker is that he summarizes at the end so krishna will see summarizes the entire chapter and entire section at the end so uh, krishna is telling how one should control the lust and in purport propad gives the entire summary of the third chapter so if you are wondering what did we learn in third chapter what's going on so that's all is being summarized by shila prabhupad in the purport so please read the purport deepak sir purport this third chapter of bhagavad gita is conclusively direct to krishna consciousness by knowing oneself as the eternal servitor of the supreme personality of god without considering impersonal voidness the ultimate end in the material existence of life one is certainly influenced by propensities for lust and desire for dominating the resources of material nature desire for overloading and for sense gratification is the greatest enemy of the conditioned soul but by the strength of krishna consciousness one can control the material senses the mind and the intelligence one may not give up work and prescribed duties all of a sudden but by gradually developing krishna consciousness one can be situated in a transcendental position without being influenced by the material senses and the mind by steady intelligence directed towards one's pure identity this is the sum total of this chapter in the immutes immature stage of material existence philosophical speculations and artificial attempts to control the senses by the so called practice of yogic posture can never help a man towards spiritual life he must be trained in krishna consciousness by higher intelligence thus and the to the third chapter of shrimad bhagavad gita in the matter of karma yoga or the discharge of one's prescribed duty in krishna consciousness yeah so this is how proper summarizes the entire chapter in this purport so one should use the strength of our trained intelligence 
which should be fixed in transcendental knowledge to protect us from falling victim to inappropriate actions impelled by passion, Rajoguna. Hmm. So in this chapter, basically, Krishna has glorified transcendental knowledge as that which elevates us from Sakama Karma Yoga to Nishkama Karma Yoga. The transcendental knowledge is the main difference. How a person uh, who is attached to the fruits of the results, you know, learns to work without attachment. Hmm. So, detached action, that is Nishkama Karma Yoga. So, transcendental knowledge has uh, the power to purify our consciousness of passion and raise it to goodness. Hmm. Through transcendental knowledge, one can be purified of passion and come to this platform of Sattva. That's why knowledge is very, very important. Now, in this final verse of this chapter, Krishna certified transcendental knowledge as being able to award our intelligence the strength to overcome lusty desires. Hmm. So, this knowledge also, that's why knowledge has great power. So, next chapter it will come. Nahi dhyane na sadrusham pavitra uchyate. Krishna will speak it. Hmm. Next chapter. So, this knowledge is the thing which is very, very important. Hmm. And this knowledge gives the intelligence the strength by which one can overcome the uh, lusty desires. Hmm. So, in this way, after describing so many benefits of transcendental knowledge, Krishna is further glorified in the chapter 4. Hmm. So, knowledge cannot be neglected. It is very important. Sometimes we may think that, oh, in bhakti, you know, generally knowledge is not so much uh, Spo, what you say emphasized but what is uh, not so much emphasized or what is not so much talked about is the impersonal jnana but the jnana the knowledge which is helpful for bhakti that is very much required and which is very much important so that's how the next chapter begins fourth chapter will begin now with a uh, title as transcendental knowledge so that is the fourth chapter Hmm. So, this uh, ends third chapter and fourth chapter now, this is the first section of the fourth chapter, is from first verse to fourth verse. Hmm. So, uh, so, in this particular chapter, Krishna is presenting transcendental knowledge by which one can be protected from the bondage of lust. So, this is the link with the previous chapter. So, Krishna is describing how he personally gave this transcendental knowledge to the great kings who are meant to impart it to the citizens by education, culture and devotion and thus help them utilize the opportunity of human form of life. Yeah. So, in this chapter, particular chapter, Krishna is presenting jnana or transcendental knowledge and the glories of such jnana. So, he, he first describes the lineage of transcendental knowledge or parampara. So, first section is of parampara. First two verse to fourth verse is going, being spoken about the transcendental parampara. Hmm. So, please recite the first verse. Dhairavan uh, Ram Prabhu. Sri Bhagavan Vacha Sri Bhagavan Vacha Sri Mam Vibhaswate Yogam Sri Mam Vibhaswate Yogam Roktavan Aham Abhyayam Roktavan Aham Abhyayam Roktavan Aham Abhyayam Vibhaswan Manabe Praha Translation. Translation. The the personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna said, I instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god Vivaswan, and Vivaswan instructed it to Manu, the father of mankind, and Manu in turn instructed it to Ikswaku. Yeah. 
Okay, so please read the purport also. Purport. Herein we find the history of the Bhagavad Gita traced from a remote time when it was delivered to the royal order of all planets, beginning from the sun planet. The kings of all planets are especially meant for the protection of the inhabitants, and therefore the royal order should understand the science of Bhagavad Gita in order to be able to rule the citizens and protect them from material bondage to lust. Yes. Human life is yes, meant... Yes, stop. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada says that it is a history, not mythology, as some people put it. Bhagavad Gita is a history and this history is being spoken in this particular chapter, in this particular verse. So beginning from the sun planet, this knowledge was given. So the royal order on the sun planet, so first of all, the modern man has to accept that there are living entities on other planets also. And there are living entities on sun planet. Now this, there is a not only just living entities are there on the sun planet, there is an entire civilization on the sun planet. Not only there is a civilization, that civilization is much more advanced than what civilization we find on the earth. So these are the very important, first of all, you know, uh, we have to understand that there is an advanced civilization on other planets. So there is a royal order even on the sun planet. So, and Prabhupada says that kings of all planets are especially meant for protection of inhabitants and that's why king should be given this science of Bhagavad Gita so that the kings can rule the citizens from the bondage of lust. So, this is such an amazing thing concept Prabhupada is talking about. What is the duty of the king to protect the citizens from enemy Yes, not only just external enemies of other countries to protect the citizen from the internal enemy, that is lust. Hmm. So just like the, the royal order, hmm, the president, prime minister, they are very alert to protect their citizens from the attack of other countries, other enemies, or even the terrorists and all that. But the most formidable, formidable enemy of everyone is lust. And that's why the king should make an arrangement so that the citizens will be saved from the uh, material bondage to lust. Mm -hmm. And that's how they should learn the science of Bhagavad Gita and rule according to the science of Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada says further that um, the executive heads of all the states and planets are obliged to impart these lessons to citizens by three things. How they should impart this lesson to the citizens? By education. So they should include this Bhagavad Gita education within the education system itself. There should be culture. Not only education is sufficient, but there has to be culture. So culture is formed by character. Isn't it? So people should live by it. Those, those who are educating, they should live by it. And also there should be devotion to the Supreme Lord. So, very nice. Prabhupada has given such uh, wonderful sutras for everything practically. How the life should be lived and how things should be done. So, the royal order should impart this lesson of spiritual knowledge, especially knowledge of Bhagavad Gita to citizens by three things. Education, education, culture and devotion. Hmm? So, now further, Prabhupada goes on to explain that how in this particular millennium, uh, so there is a sun planet and there is a ruler of the sun planet also. So, of course, on the earth previously there used to be one ruler. Now there is no one ruler. But sun planet, there is one ruler still. And his name is Vivaswan, sun god. Hmm? That's why he says, Dham Vivaswate Yogam Proktavan Aham Avvayam hmm? uh, so in this millennium, sun god is known as Vivaswan. He is the king of the sun. And Prabhupada says that sun is the origin of all planets within the solar system. And Prabhupada quotes, if 
यक्षुरेश सविता सकल ग्रहण राजा समस्त मुर्सुरमूर्ति रशेश तेजा राजा राजा मीन्स किंग सो सन इज द किंग ऑफ ऑल द प्लैनेट्स एंड सन गॉड रूल्स द सन प्लैनेट सो सन प्लैनेट कंट्रोल्स ऑल अदर प्लैनेट्स बाय सप्लाइंग हीट एंड लाइट सो सन इज रोटेटिंग बट यस्या भ्रमति समृत काल चक्रो The sun planet is also rotating under the order of Krishna, and that's how sun, in one sense, you can say, is the chief of all the planets, and that's how is the chief of all the inhabitants, you know, in the entire universe, and that's why Krishna made whom as the first disciple, the top leader, that is Vivaswan. He made his first disciple to understand Bhagavad Gita. so further if you go ahead in the purport prabhupad is giving entire calculation that how bhagavad gita how much old is bhagavad gita hmm. so you can read it yourself so what is the conclusion the conclusion is that a rough estimate in that is that the gita was spoken at least 120400000 means kitna hota hai ye years ago so that's how proper says it has been extant for 2 million years bhagavad gita is not a new scripture you know written by some speculators it has been there since minimum 2 million years so uh, this shows that the bhagavad gita is the oldest hmm, oldest religious scripture so it was re-spoken by lord krishna to arjun about 5000 years ago so that doesn't mean that bhagavad gita is only 5000 years old it is millions of years old and this is the rough history of bhagavad gita according to gita itself hmm? so gita itself gives the history of bhagavad gita and in this way krishna is telling you know about the history so we have to accept this fact as a history because the modern scientists they cannot trace out it through some archaeological evidences so many times indologists and all they say that this is all mythology why mythology sir you know why you call it mythology just because you cannot find some uh, something which is within the which is cremated you know within the earth that's why it becomes mythology you know so it's all you know a systematic plan to somehow discredit all the vedic literatures and uh, propagate you know their own their own agendas so bhagavad gita is not uh, something a mythology it is a fact it is a history which has been existing since many many years and everything cannot be understood so simply some archaeological evidences isn't it I think there are different ways of acquiring knowledge so you all know that there are different ways of acquiring knowledge so this is a history and propa says that bhagavad gita is as good as vedas being spoken by the supreme lord because in the beginning of creation supreme lord breathed out the vedas so they are spoken vedas were spoken by the supreme lord and bhagavad gita is also spoken by the supreme lord and this way bhagavad gita is shruti if you remember you now we discussed it in the beginning itself first class if you remember we discussed how bhagavad gita is prasthana tray it fits into all three hmm? shruti smruti nyaya do you remember that in the first class we had discussed this point shruti smruti nyaya so in this way bhagavad gita being spoken directly by the supreme lord it is non different than vedas and that's how it is a paurusheya hmm? so that's why bhagavad gita should be accepted as it is from disciplic succession and one should keep a complete faith on bhagavad gita so this is what he has spoken in the first verse so in this way sun god is the great authority he received this knowledge and attained perfection okay so please recite second verse adhiras uh, prabhu कौन सा श्लोक चल रहा है? 
एवं परंपरा प्राप्त एवं राजर्षयो विदु कालेन महता योगो नष्ट ट्रांसलेशन दिस सुप्रीम साइंस वॉज दस रिसीव थ्रू द चेन ऑफ डिसिप्लिक सक्सेशन एंड द सेंडली किंग्स अंडरस्टूड इन इट दैट वे बट इन कोर्स ऑफ टाइम द सक्सेशन वॉज ब्रोकन and therefore the science as it is appear to be lost yeah so uh, again it is continual the discussion of uh, parampara mm. so purport propas says that although the gita was specifically meant for saintly king because they were executive they were to execute its purpose in ruling over the citizens so it was spoken to kshatriyas and saintly kings why because they will propagate it and execute the purpose of bhagavad gita through their administrative abilities so they will administer the principles of bhagavad gita hmm. so proper says that certainly bhagavad gita is never meant for demoniac persons who would dissipate its value for no one's benefit and would devise all types of interpretations according to personal whims as soon as the original purpose was scattered by the motives of unscrupulous commentators there arose the need of reestablishing the disciplic succession so because yogo nashta parantapa happened what do you mean by yogo nashta parantapa hmm? so yogo nashta parantapa means that uh, yeah when there are interpretations given according to personal whims and the original person is purpose is scattered by the motives of unscrupulous commentators the original purport of bhagavad gita the original intention of bhagavad gita that is lost why it is lost because of unscrupulous commentators hmm? and that is called yogo nashta parantapa and that's why there arose to need to reestablish the disciplic succession so when we say that this knowledge was lost means what is it that people forgot sometimes it may not be that the people forgot the knowledge or there is no book available of that knowledge or nobody is uh, knowing it the meaning of the knowledge is lost is also that the purpose of that knowledge the real purport of that knowledge the real uh, intention behind speaking that knowledge is lost because of unscrupulous commentators sometimes they distort the entire so we see that even it had happened with chaitanya charitamrut also shila bhaktivinoda thakur he had a tough time to get the real copy of chaitanya charitamrut because what was available in the name of chaitanya charitamrut was all wrong interpretations you know so that's why bhaktivinoda thakur had to struggle very hard to get the genuine copy of chaitanya charitamrut hmm. so prabhu pas says in the same way at present moment also same thing has happened hmm. there are many editions of gita especially in english but almost all of them are not according to authorized disciplic succession proper says that almost are all not according to authorized disciplic succession although there are so many editions of bhagavad gita almost all of them do not accept krishna as supreme personality of godhead although they make a good business on the words of krishna they use krishna's words to make a good business for their own name fame and prestige but they do not accept krishna as supreme lord and proper says this spirit is demoniac because demons do not believe in god but simply enjoy the property of supreme this is the typical characteristic of demons what is the characteristic of demons they simply enjoy the property of supreme but they don't want lord who is the master of that property they disregard like ravan he wanted to enjoy sita but he didn't want ram so in this way this is a demoniac spirit where in one doesn't believe in krishna and somehow or other try to just make a business out of bhagavad gita people want ram rajya but they don't want ram they want ram rajya without ram so this is a demoniac spirit basically enjoy the property of lord but don't accept the lord don't believe in the lord so that's why prabhu says an attempt is made here with to fulfill this great want this great necessity is there 
to present the knowledge of the Bhagavad Gita as it is. And that's why Prabhupada says it is the great boon to humanity. You know, because so many wrong commentaries are there. You know, so that's why Bhagavad Gita needs to be presented as it is. So this Bhagavad Gita as it is, is the great boon for humanity. You know, uh, because it can do great good for the people in general. Mm. So now, why does Krishna speak this science specifically to Arjun? What is the qualification of Arjun to receive this knowledge? So that is described in the next verse. So please recite verse number 3. Uh, Gautam Prabhu. Saivayam Mayate Adhyam Saivayam Mayam Mayate Adhyam Yoga Prokta Puratana Yoga Prokta Puratana Bhakto Asime Sakhacheti Bhakto Asime Sakhacheti Rahasyam Hi Etat Uttamam Rahasyam Hi Etat Uttamam Translation. That very ancient science of the relationship with the Supreme is today told by me to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend and can therefore understand the transcendental mystery of this science. Yes. So Prabhupada, this, uh, this is the verse very important also. And what is the qualification to receive Bhagavad Gita is being spoken here. Krishna says very clearly, Bhakta, the word bhakta is very much used. Probably this is the first time word bhakta is used by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. Isn't it? The bhakta is very clearly used. Bhakto si me sakha cheti. Because you are my sakha and you are my bhakta. So these are the qualifications. That's why he is talking, he is telling uh, this knowledge. So the qualification of recipient of spiritual science is he should be a devotee of Krishna. Demons cannot understand it. So, Parapod Prabhupada reiterated the same point. The Lord selected Arjun as a recipient of this great science, owing to his being devotee. But for demon, it is not possible to understand this great mysterious science. Hmm. Prabhupada says that there are a number of editions of this great book of knowledge. Some of them are commentaries by devotees and some of them have commentaries by demons. Demons also comment on Bhagavad Gita. Hmm? Demons comment on Bhagavad Gita? Yes. yes. There are many commentaries. Yeah. So we just now saw what is a person who is demon? He wants to make a good business out of Bhagavad Gita for his name, fame, recognition. But he doesn't accept Krishna as Supreme Lord. So such demons also comment on Bhagavad Gita. Commentation by devotees is real, whereas that of demons is useless. Any commentary on Gita following in the footsteps of Arjun is real devotional service to the cause of this great science. That's what Prabhupada speaks in the purport. So, in this way, the gist of this particular verse is only a devotee can understand Krishna, others cannot, because the relationship with Krishna is rahasya. It's secret, confidential and mysterious. So Maya has covered the real identity of living entity and Krishna has no inclination to remove the covering for anyone other than his devotees. And that's why in order to remove that covering of Maya, Krishna speaks Bhagavad Gita. But because he wants to remove that covering only from devotees, because devotees want to be removed from that covering. And that's why Krishna speaks Bhagavad Gita to only devotees. Hmm. So now, fourth verse, please recite. Uh, Himanshu Prabhu. Uh, yes, Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha. Arjuna Vacha. Aparam. Aparam 
ियर so how uh, how do i accept how do i understand this that you instructed the science to sun god you know you don't appear to be a million years old you are like you know same like my age hmm? you are not million years old so how do, how do i understand this hmm? so purport rupa says that arjun is a great devotee of the lord so he could not how he could not believe krishna's words why he is doubting krishna's words the fact is that arjun is not inquiring for himself but for those who do not believe in the supreme personality of godhead or for the demons who do not like the idea that krishna should be accepted as personality of godhead for them only arjun inquires on this point as if he were himself not aware of the personality of godhead krishna so he is convinced of what krishna has spoken but for others you know he is arjun is enquiring hmm. so so arjun put this question to krishna so that he himself could speak authoritatively because krishna is the supreme authority accepted by all so better krishna speaks authoritatively that's why he put this question so further in the purport purpose is it is necessary that everyone for his own interest know the science of krishna therefore when krishna himself speak krishna who is the greatest authority when he himself speak about himself it is auspicious for all the worlds there is no scope for speculations because when krishna speaks for himself that is the highest authoritative information and that's how it causes the welfare for the whole world so further prabhu says devotees will happily worship such authoritative statements of krishna because they are always eager to know more and more about krishna so devotees worship and they very much welcome these wonderful words which are spoken by krishna directly hmm? because devotees want to know more and more about krishna so in this way uh, at the last lines few last line purpose says that arjun's putting this question before lord is simply an attempt by the devotee to defy the atheistic attitude of persons who consider krishna to be an ordinary human being subject to the modes of material nature hmm. so krishna arjun is also want to prove that krishna is not an ordinary person like you and me krishna is some someone who is transcendental he is eternal and he is primeval personality hmm. so that's why he can the further verse it will also come that's why he can remember also what he has done in the past life <laughs> you know previously what he has done whereas we cannot remember so is a different there is a difference between a living entity and krishna so so in this way krishna explained that one receives transcendental knowledge through disciplic succession because vivaswan is thousands of years old and krishna is arjun's contemporary so how krishna has possibly instructed the science of vivaswan many thousands of years before you know so that's what arjun asked in this particular verse and now krishna will start answering from the fifth verse please recite fifth verse uh, kartik pro hmm. shri bhagavan uvacha 
बहुनी में व्यतीता बहुनी में व्यतीता जन्मा तब च अर्जुन तानि अहम वेद सर्वाणी नम वेथ पर ट्रांसलेशन द पर्सनालिटी ऑफ गॉड हेज से many many bars both you and i have bars i can remember all of them but you cannot or subdue of the envy hmm. so this starts the next section of this chapter hmm. first so till fourth verse was the first section now fifth to 10 is the second section of this chapter the divine nature of lord krishna's appearance hmm. that is being spoken in from fifth to 10th verse so krishna is telling that many births both you and i have gone through hmm? so uh, you know but krishna says that i remember all of them you cannot so prabhupad begins the purport with quoting from brahma samhita advaitam achyutam anadi anant roopam madhyam purana purusham manav yauvanam cha hmm? edaye shudulama madurlava atma bhakto so particular context is आद्यम पुराण पुरुषम बट नव यौवनम हि इज द ओरिजिनल ओल्डेस्ट पर्सनैलिटी ऑल्सो प्रोपत कोट्स फर्दर रामादि मुर्षि तो शुक्लाश नियम तिष्ठ नावतार मको भुवनेशु किंतु कृष्ण स्वयं समभत परम पुमा गोविंद मादि पुरुषम तम अहम वदा सो सो प्रोपत सीज दैट इन द वेदास इट इज सेड दैट the lord although one without a second manifest himself in innumerable forms that's why advaitam achyutam anadi ananta roopam hmm? and what are those ananta roopam ramadi murti shukala niyamena tishtam different different forms supreme lord manifest himself through and he is compared to be like a vaidurya stone vaidurya stone means it is a one stone you know of course these days is very difficult to find vaidurya stone but it is one stone but if you uh, it is kind of diamond so if you look it at from the different sides it lo- looks like of different color so from one side it may appear like red color another side if you look it will appear like a green color another side if you look it will may appear like a magenta color like that so different sides the same stone you look from different angles you look from it looks of different colors although it is the same stone hmm. so similarly krishna is also like that vaidurya stone which changes color yet still remains one hmm. so although there are different multiple forms of the lord hmm, but uh, by the pure devotees you know not by simply study of the vedas vedeshu adurlabha hmm. vedeshu durlabha hmm. and atma bhakto adurlabha hmm? so those who are devotees for them adurlabha durlabha means rare so for vedas it is rare to understand by vedic study but by devotional service this is understood that all these multiple forms are one hmm? it is they, these are all forms of the supreme lord only hmm? so propose says further that devotees like arjun are constant companions of the lord and whenever the lord incarnates the associates also incarnate so arjun also incarnates along with krishna in different capacities so arjun is eternal associate of the lord and that's why when krishna spoke bhagavad gita to sun god vivaswan millions of years ago arjun was also present over there but in a different capacity but the difference is what krishna remembers that he has spoken this bhagavad gita 2 million sagar to vivaswan arjun does not hmm? arjun does not remember this is the difference between a jiva and supreme lord hmm? so arjun is called here as parantapa hmm? one who is um, subduer of enemy although he is very powerful but at the same time he is a mighty hero who could subdue so many enemies but his power of remembrance is also still limited he could not recall what happened in his previous birth so propa says the conclusion is that even though living entity may become very very great 
or even in the liberated stage, one cannot equal to the Supreme Lord. The Mayavadis think that after liberation, you know, as long as one is conditioned, one is subordinate to the Supreme Lord. After one is liberated, then one is as good as Lord. Hmm? Like that. That's the Mayavadi concept. But that is refuted here in that even though the living entity may get liberated and may be as great as uh, this thing. Living entity may be as great as the supreme, uh, as great as Arjun. Still, he cannot equal to Krishna because, you know, uh, it was Krishna who could remember even his previous lives. Arjun cannot remember. Hmm. So that's why Krishna is called as infallible Achyuta. Means that he never forget himself, even though he comes to material world. Although he comes in contact with material world. He doesn't have the tendency of forgetting himself. So that's why he never falls to material world. Hmm. And that's why a living entity is not called Achyuta because he has the tendency to fall. He has tendency to be acquired. And that's why again, another reason that living entity and Lord can be never equal in all respects. Hmm. Like that. So, uh, what is the reason that living entity forgets everything? Because he changes body. So this is the third point. Hmm. Living entity forgets because of change of body. Why Lord remembers everything? Because he never changes his body. Lord's body is always constant. Hmm. Dehi knows mean yatha dehi doesn't apply to the Lord. It applies only to a living entity. He does not change his Satchidananda body. So his Advaita means there is no distinction between his body and himself. Hmm. So when Lord comes to material world, you know, he doesn't have any material body that will be spoken in the next verse. So, so both Krishna and Arjun had many, many births, but because Krishna has transcendental body, which is fully spiritual, you know, whereas a Jiva, Arjun has different body than Krishna. That's why Krishna never for changes his body and that's why Krishna always remembers, whereas Arjun cannot remember. Okay, so please recite sixth verse. Uh, Lalit Prabhu. Ajopi san sanavayatma. Ajopi san avayatma. Bhuta namishwaro pisan. Bhuta namishwaro pisan. Prakrutim swamadhishtaya. Prakrutim Swamadishtaya Sambhava Mayatma Mayaya Sambhava Mayatma Mayaya Translation Although I am unborn and my transcendental body never deteriorates and although I am the lord of all living entities I still appear in every millennium in my original transcendental form. Yes. So this is important verse to be memorized. Ajopisan Nave Atma, Bhutana Mishwaro Pisan, Prakrutim Swam, Adishthaya, Sambhavami, Atma Mayaya. So now Krishna Arjun is telling, asking Krishna that how you remember, you know, something of the past which you spoke many, many millions of years ago. I cannot remember anything. So Krishna is now telling about the uniqueness of his birth and his activities. He says, yes, you all have taken, you also have taken many, many births because spirit soul is always present, you know, he is never destroyed. I also have taken many, many births, but there is a difference between you and me. Hmm? Although you have also taken many births, I have also taken many births, but my birth is not ordinary birth. It is unique. So every millennium I am coming, but how I come? Atma Maya. Ya. Hmm? So, although I am Aja, Aja means unborn, I am actually not born. Ajopi, San, Avyayatma, I am imperishable, my body is imperishable, unchangeable. Bhutana, Mishwaropi, San, I am the master of all jivas. Hmm? So, I am different from all other living entities. Hmm? Although I am also living entity, Chetanas, Chetana, Naam, but Eko, Bahu, Naam, hmm? Yo, Vidadhati, Kaman. Bhutanam Ishwaro Pisan Prakrutim Swam Adishthaya. Hmm? I come in this material world, Sambhavami Atma Mayaya by my own internal potency. 
whereas any living entity he comes in this material world through the agency of external potency but lord comes manifest himself in every millennium but through internal potency so this is the uniqueness of krishna's appearance that although krishna has spoken about the peculiar although krishna comes he may appear like a ordinary person but he remembers everything of his many many past births whereas a common person cannot remember so propa says that we cannot remember even what we have done few years ago few hours ago also if you are asked that yesterday at this time what we were doing so you may say bhagavad gita we were discussing this was the class was going on at this time what was the exact thing which we were discussing at this time 8 10 yesterday that is difficult to tell even if somebody can tell what we are doing yesterday at 8 10 what about day before yesterday <laughs> so just one or two days before things we cannot remember just previous week things we cannot remember so but krishna is not like that he can remember everything Hmm. So, so Propa says, yet men offer dare to claim themselves as God or Krishna. Hmm. Those who claim to be God, उनको बोलना चाहिए. बताओ चार साल पहले क्या क्या बोले थे आप एक शर्त पे. This particular moment, what you are doing four years ago, <laughs> isn't it? How they can dare to say themselves as Krishna? Hmm. So the difference is that Krishna appears in his own body, Swarupa. He does not have to change his body. as common living entity changes his body hmm. by and how he comes by atma maya by his internal potency so this verse is very important because one of the typical argument of mayavadis is what bhagwan aate hai to unko bhi janm lena padta hai bhagwan aate hai to unko bhi janma mrityu ke karma ke chakkar mein padna padta hai so this verse refutes it he comes in atma maya ya he doesn't come through external energy so when he comes he comes in his original body when lord comes he doesn't have material body typical mayavad means what when lord comes in this material world he also accepts the body made up of maya like any other living entity this is called mayavad mayavad means lord's body is made up of maya which is external energy but this was refutes and he says atma maya ya i come in my internal potency my body is not coming through external potency that's why there is no difference between krishna's body and krishna himself but for us it is a difference between our body and our selves as spirit soul it is not such difference exists for krishna he comes in his own same original body through his internal potency hmm. so so although he comes in this material world but he is uncontaminated in this material world hmm. so and although he is unborn he comes in transcendental body but it appears that he is taking birth hmm. so kunti marani also in the first canto prayer she says that although you are unborn but still you appear as if you are taking birth hmm. so although krishna's body never changes but still it appears that he grows from babyhood to childhood right we have different different leelas of the lord babyhood to childhood to youth so this is why this is then if krishna's body doesn't change he has a avaya body then how he is growing he should have the same body so we have to understand it is only for the sake of leela only for the sake of past time krishna is not bound and that's why propa says that krishna never grows beyond youth we never see krishna old hmm. so at the time of battle of kurukshetra krishna was you know quite kind of you know more than 100 years and krishna had many many grandchildren and great grandchildren also that time so according to material calculation he was very much aged but when we see krishna how he looks in the battlefield he looks like a 20 year old boy hmm. he doesn't look like a buddha you never see krishna old right a buddha vyakti <laughs> he is always youthful that's why adyam purana purusham he is the original personality oldest personality nava yauvanam he is always like a fresh youth hmm. so in this way krishna's neither body deteriorates 
neither his intelligence deteriorates nor his memory deteriorates he has always fresh memory fresh body fresh intelligence so this is the uniqueness of lord and that's so the krishna's appearance and disappearance are compared to be like sun's rising and setting so when the sun is rising we cannot say the sun has taken birth and when sun sets we cannot say sun has died now sun has simply risen at another place sun is eternally existing the so same way sun may appear and disappear from our sight so that's why lords uh, generally it is not said birth although some outside people may say krishna janma actually it is said krishna avirbhav you know avirbhav and tirobhav means they appear and disappear like sun appears and disappears whereas janma and mrutyu is for ordinary condition soul in this world so like that and why krishna comes in his original form out of his causeless mercy so that they can living entities can concentrate on the form so lord comes in his self same form the self same form which is there in the spiritual world in the same form lord comes but why he comes like this in this earth what is the business lord has does lord want to enjoy something of this material world yes nothing to enjoy of this material world but he comes in this material world to you know so that uh, out of his causeless mercy so that people of this world have object of meditation that is supreme lord himself and in this way they'll be saved from mental concoctions so bhagwan aake sab bata dete ki dekho main aisa dikhta hu don't concoct hmm? maybe perhaps he is like this perhaps he is like that there is no scope for concoction hmm? lord himself tells about himself so by his own coming he destroys all the speculations and concoctions you know so prabhupada says that so that one can concentrate on the form of the supreme lord as is not on the mental concoctions or imaginations which the impersonalist strongly thinks lord's forms to be hmm? so this is one meaning of atma maya atma maya means coming out of his internal potency another meaning of atma maya is coming out of his causeless mercy there are two meanings of atma maya atma maya is internal potency maya also means mercy you know we, you all you know uh, know this another meaning of maya also na no? maya is affection hmm? we say na inka inke upar bahut maya hai hmm? ye particular व्यक्ति का दूसरे व्यक्ति के ऊपर बहुत माया है माया है मीन्स अफेक्शन है सो दिस इज अनदर मीनिंग ऑफ ऑल्सो वर्ड आत्म माया बाय माई ओन कॉजलेस मर्सी कृष्णा सेज आई कम टू दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड इन ऑर्डर टू यू नो गिव द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ मेडिटेशन फॉर कंडीशन सोल सो दैट दे कैन मेडिटेट ऑन माई ओरिजिनल रियल फॉर्म एंड नॉट फ्रॉम सम कॉन्कॉक्टेड फॉर्म्स so in this way there are two meanings of atma maya one is comes through internal potency that means he is not having any material body another is he comes by his causeless mercy yeah so in this way uh, krishna like the sun exists before he becomes visible on the earth and again like sun krishna manifests himself to our vision on the scheduled time so on scheduled incarnations hmm. so krishna's body is aja unborn and avyaya without deterioration his birth unlike ours is not forced upon us upon him you know so this is another difference between krishna and ourselves we are forced to take particular body and particular birth whereas krishna's birth is out of his own sweet will krishna is not forced to take birth hmm. so we are forced isn't it we can't choose our birth neither we can choose the date of our birth any one of you can choose the date of your birth hmm. or can we choose our body also one sense not can we choose our parents can we choose our location no so we are forced to take birth in a particular by our pious or impious karma whereas krishna he is not forced to take birth he takes birth or he appears based on his sweet will that's why he is ishvara the controller of the laws of karma and in this way laws of karma cannot bind him that's how he comes by his internal potency not external energy yeah so prabhupada also spoke that krishna appears in this material world in his original eternal form with two hands holding a flute and this is uncontaminated within this material world 
So this is what is Supreme Lord's particular speciality of his incarnation. So this verse is very, very important because many people believe that Krishna also had to undergo the tribulations of this world. And that's why this verse is very important to explain to them also. So our time is up. We'll continue next time. Mm, maybe some questions I can take. So, okay, we'll stop here. Those who want, they can go. Go ahead and we'll, I'll take some questions. Jai Granthara Shrimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Does the soul have its own intelligence? Yes. Mind and does it depend on the material mind and intelligence for carrying out activities? No. Soul has its own mind, intelligence, everything. But in material world, what happens? The soul manifests through material mind and intelligence. You know, but soul has originally his own mind, intelligence and all. But there is no difference between soul and its mind. That's the main point. Yes. So, Asim Prabhapuru, you can ask if you are there. Asim Prabhapuru, you are there? Okay, not there. Then, uh, is there any relation between Vaivasvatmu and Vivaswan? Yeah, Vaivasvatmanu is uh, son god of Vivas, uh, is the son of son. <laughs> S O N son of S U N son. Hmm? Vaivasvatmanu was the Satyavrat in his past life for whom Matsya Avatar came. And this next life, he came as Vaivasvatmanu. He became the son of sun god, Surya Putra. So his brother of Yamraj. Vaivasvatmanu. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Could you please give examples how mind can be strengthened by intelligence? Mind can be strengthened by intelligence. Mind can be controlled by intelligence because intelligence is uh, powerful. That's what we discussed, that intelligence is more powerful. So when the function of intelligence is determination and discrimination, so when the mind gives wrong proposals, the intelligence can reject them. And mind can only supply proposals actually. Mind cannot take decisions. Mind supplies proposals. But if the intelligence is strong, then the intelligence will reject the wrong proposals and accept the right proposals. And intelligence will also remain determined not to sanction the wrong inputs or wrong proposals by mind. And in this way, uh, yeah, uh, the intelligence controls the mind. Conditioned soul forget because it changes body. Arjun is forgetting. Is it because Arjun is playing the role of conditioned soul or even the liberated soul? Fall? Yeah, liberated souls don't forget generally because he is playing as if he is a conditioned soul. That's why he has forgetting. Prakrutim. Prakrutim means energy. Prakrutim swam adishthaya. Hmm. So what is the word to word meaning Prabhupada gives for Prakrutim? Hmm. What Prabhupada says? Transcendental form. Yeah. So, Prakrutim Prabhupada says in transcendental form. He comes in, he knows or, original transcendental form that Prabhupada has given, meaning directly. Okay, so Pri Arjun Prabhu and then Sumitra, you can ask question. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, uh, uh, in the third chapter, uh, verse 41, uh, Krishna uh, recommends that first we have to um, control our senses. And then in the next verse, uh, Krishna says that, uh, uh, Prabhupada writes in the purport that one has to engage the mind in uh, Krishna consciousness. Uh, and for that reason, uh, the intelligence has to be strengthened uh, with uh, transcendental knowledge. And that is why uh, Krishna speaks this uh, fourth chapter of transcendental knowledge. Is that understanding correct? Yes, yes. So that's the link. That the intelligence has to be strengthened. You know, uh, because this lust, uh, so we, as we discussed that the intelligence is currently corrupted. So the solution is borrow intelligence from Shastras. 
so that proper knowledge gives rise to right intelligence then it will control the mind and mind will in turn control the senses so that's why this whole transcendental knowledge is spoken that's a link correct so uh, this uh, 3.41 verse it is like to start with uh, one has to control the senses and then gradually one has to uh, train the mind uh, yes to think of krishna yeah correct yes. okay thank you then another devotee sumit prabhu your hand was also up so ji actually uh, it was answered but uh, actually wanted to know like why then krishna actually is speaking about the parampara like this is started from parampara that i wanted to know like what is the connection to it the transcendental knowledge has to be obtained in parampara otherwise it has no effect hmm. so when we say knowledge usually in the world knowledge is considered to be something synonymous to concoction and speculations right if you see in this world generally people concoct many things especially when it comes to religion and god there are a lot of concoctions so that's why first of all when we say that the knowledge has to be received and knowledge importance of knowledge so first qualification of that knowledge is that knowledge should be received in parampara nahi to wo knowledge ka kuch fayda nahi hai if it is a born out of one speculation and concoctions that knowledge cannot help so that's why that parampara is stated first yes prabhu thank you prabhu okay another question here is that arjun in purport prabhupada mentions arjun was also present when krishna spoke against you know yeah there is no translation it is not written Uh, so you can ask prabhupada only what is the reference but it is a uh, prabhupada is speaking more it from a logical point of view that devotees of the lord always appear with the lord because arjun is nitya parikar so one of the reference we can understand is that when lord came as narayan rushi arjun came as nara rushi so arjun being the eternal associate of the lord so he always comes with the lord but he may come in a different capacity he may not be exactly sitting there you know in the same class when krishna is speaking to vivaswan he may not be another audience you know of he may be coming from different capacities like that so one uh, reference is naranarayan rishi you know they are very old and ancient so but uh, same as they are same as krishna and arjun so in this way always you know devotees also eternal associates of the lord they come and one place propa says that arjun is such a eternal associate that wherever krishna goes arjun always goes with him that when one of the places i can't immediately give you reference for it but one of the places propa says like that that arjun always goes with krishna wherever he is that's why in chaitanya leela also arjun comes as ramananda rai right he comes as ramananda rai so that's a reference but it is more that's why because this is a fact that arjun is a nitya parikar so that's why propa says that arjun must have been present that time also when krishna spoke to vivaswan apart from that i don't know any other references there or not okay ah uh, proji one question ah uh, so we uh, in the bhagavatam uh, it is said that mind is born of the mode of goodness and intelligence is born of the mode of passion ah uh, then how come intelligence uh, according to the modes uh, it is higher than the mind and it can control the mind so little technical what <laughs> had that doubt uh, how is it uh, happening mind is born born of mode of goodness intelligence is born mode of passion yeah that is true mm i would like to find it out there was this question asked in our bhakti vaibho so i'll find it out and let you know because uh, this question was surely asked during our bhakti vaibho class i remember but what was the answer i don't remember exactly so i'll find it out and tell you okay okay yeah yes i can take only one and one question from both of you because i have to go for some services now Think and uh, pure devotee. Their body 
budget body as well as the source that you get to. Then again, that is hard. So, as a sense, it requires the budget body is there. And inside, there is source. So, how do you do the structure? See, body doesn't mean only just a covering. Body also has its, it also means in its in terms of its purpose. So when the so-called material body is being engaged in the Lord's service, it serves the purpose of being spirit soul also. And that way, that's why it is considered to be non-different in terms of its effect, not in terms of its constituent ingredients. Because a body which is engaged in service of the Lord, it is acting as good as spiritual body. So that's why. It is non-different. Just like the iron rod put into fire becomes fiery. So just because it becomes fiery, so it can act as good as fire. Although it doesn't become fire. It is fiery. The same way the body may not change in its constitutional situation in terms of, you know, Satchidananda, it may not become the body itself. But... The purpose of the spirit soul, spiritual body is served through this material body also. And that's why that body becomes spiritualized. And with such a spiritualized body, one can do all the functions of spiritual life. Hmm? All right. Yes. Hmm. Why saintly kings? Because kings are the ones who administer everything. You know, who decides the policies of education? It is king who decides, like government who decides the policies of education. Who decides what are the rules and regulations for the state? It is the king who decides. Who decides various administrations, take, uh, what is forbidden, what is accepted? It is the king decides. So if the king is made devotee, if he is given transcendental knowledge, then he will rule the he will do administration based on that knowledge of Bhagavad Gita. Hmm. Like for example, in most of the countries, the kings of the countries are sanctioning cow slaughter. But if he receives the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita, he will not allow cow slaughter. And in this way, the mass of people can be protected from sinful activities and wrongdoings. And that's why the kings are given knowledge. Why? Because they influence, they are the ones who make the policies. They are the ones who decide you know, what uh, What are the rules and regulations of the state. And that's why kings are given this knowledge as the first priority. Mm -hmm. So we'll stop here. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. We'll continue next week. Hare Pol. Thank you. Hare Pol. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, who is Shubham? Uh, who has joined? Hare Krishna, Shubham Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Guruji, I wanted to register, but due to some financial, I could not register. Within a two, uh, one or two days, I will register and then I will continue. Uh, Prabhuji, can you uh, uh, message me on WhatsApp personally? Yes, Prabhuji, you messaged me, but uh, I could not reply, Prabhuji. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can Give reply me, me one once. or two days, Prabhuji. Uh, oh, okay, okay, sure, 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 sure. No problem. Uh, yes. You can message me today just once so that uh, I am reminded that uh, you are going to join. Okay. Yes, yes, please. Okay, okay, okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, bro. Hare Krishna.